Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for this, the fourth installment in our Setting a Future Ready Foundation series. My name is Alyssa Pistoninzi. I am the Community Operations Manager for The Corner uh, co-working space and also for Nextivation, and I will be your MC for today's session. I have here with me Steve Leonard, who is our Nextivation Program Manager, and Steve will be discussing virtual and remote communication and collaboration, which is today's topic. Um, I will let Steve tell you a little bit more about himself and his background in a minute, but first I would like to go over just some basic ground rules with you. Uh, you may have noticed that your microphones are muted and the video is turned off, uh, and this is out of consideration for both our speaker and uh, your fellow participants. I would also like to note that this session is being recorded, so uh, feel free to uh, look up the recording later or if um, you know someone that was unable to attend. Uh, they can watch it live later. Uh, for live attendees who would like to interact, please use uh, the question and answer, answer feature, excuse me, to ask any questions that you may have, and we will certainly get those answered for you one question at a time. And though your video and chat are off, you will not be totally silent. We will be asking that you participate in a few interactive polls a bit later in this session to get your thoughts and your opinions of the topic at hand and how virtual communication has uh, impacted your life and your business. And with all that being said, uh, Steve, I will now turn it over to you. Thanks, Alyssa. That's great. Um, well, welcome, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be able to talk uh, to you about uh, these uh, continuing future ready awareness sessions. Uh, today's session, as Alyssa had said, is going to be around a virtual and remote collaboration and communication tools. Some of you may know of those as Zoom or as Google Meet or go to meeting, those kinds of things. Uh, I'm the Operations Program Manager for Nextivation, uh, part of uh, Penn State's initiative to help revitalize the area. And uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how these tools um, came about, uh, how they can be used, what their pros and their cons are, and be able to walk you through any questions you might have. And the polls will be very useful because it'll give us an idea of where uh, you guys are utilizing the tools as well as where you might not be and how uh, Nextivation might be able to uh, help you be a little bit more proficient at it. Uh, I'm not going to go through my background uh, in detail. As you can see here, um, my background is in industrial design and new product development, and I spent a considerable part of my career doing uh, a lot of work in innovation processes and practices. So these kind of tools are very useful in that regard. So without further ado, why don't we get started? Uh, many of you, uh, I'm assuming many of you, but maybe not all of you, uh, might have participated in the previous sessions that we've had. Uh, our first session was about uh, two months ago, month and a half ago, that was given by Dr. Snyder. And he gave an introduction into Industry 4.0, talked about the Industry 4.0 wheel, uh, as you can see here, and it covers a lot of different areas. Industry 4.0, uh, lack of a better way is, of describing is a catch-all of all these new digital technologies from cloud and edge computing to big data analytics, automation, robotics, internet of things, augmented reality, machine learning, and so on, all the way around the wheel. Uh, we're continuing along the vein of uh, digital focused uh, tools and capabilities as well as technologies. And what we're going to talk about today is a little bit more around how uh, these remote and uh, virtual collaboration tools can help in promoting the application of these uh, kind of technologies. Previously, uh, Dr. Snyder, as well as Dr. Chufi, had presented um, uh, these concepts uh, from a knowledge base, which was the wheel, but also talking about the importance of innovation and essential skills. I know that uh, Dr. Chufi covered that. Uh, in his session, uh, which was session three, which co covered things associated with uh, the Internet of Things. Uh, our philosophy is very important in that uh, we believe that you need to have a very nice, well-rounded balance between sharing the knowledge skills, the technologies and everything associated with Industry 4.0, as well as the innovation and essential skills. And what we mean by that is really things that get at the entrepreneurial mindset, uh, maintaining the essential skills of cognitive flexibility and collaboration, empathy and understanding, uh, the people management and the emotional intelligence, uh, the continual learning, uh, as well as a complex and problem, uh, complex problem solving and critical thinking, or what we might call creativity, 
which is part of a lot of the innovation practices uh, that you might be familiar with. Those things added together with the knowledge skills really creates a very powerful uh, tool and uh, approach or philosophy that uh, the Digital Innovation Lab and Nextivation are going to be pursuing to be able to provide services as well as the training and workforce development associated with uh, what is needed today in our new digital economy. But the thing that makes this work and really is the most important element that holds it all together is communication. Uh, in the past, we've uh, used different forms of communication, but things have changed. So what I wanna do is kind of give you a little bit of a snippet of the history of communication. I won't spend a whole lot of time with it and then we'll jump right into the virtual and remote uh, communication and collaboration tools. So let's talk a little bit about the evolution of communication. I'm gonna do a little bit of a history lesson here, so bear with me, but I think it's very fascinating. You'll get a clear idea exactly how fast history and technology move along this uh, continuum. We started communicating as, as human beings by, when you think about it, in the caves, grunting at each other. I know it sounds silly, but uh, somebody had the bright idea of 20,000 B before the common era of creating pictures on the side of cave walls. That was the first form of communication. And people would tell stories through that. Storytelling is a very important part of how we as humans communicate. And that's how uh, our legacies and uh, is, is spread down the ages. Uh, through the lineage of our forefathers as well as our children. Then around 5000 uh, BCE, uh, we had the what you would call the symbols or the hieroglyphics or the cuneiform as they would call it. And uh, that was, uh, it took about 15,000 years from the cave drawings to get there. But not too long after that, 2000 BCE, we had writing. We started writing things out. Somebody figured out how to take papyrus and write and start to develop a language, Arabic, for instance. The Arabic language is one of the first uh, that we can recall. So communication is advancing a little bit faster, all the different tools. Then uh, we started to communicate via Morse code in the early 1800s. And we had the telegraph wires going across the country to be able to communicate from New York all the way to San Francisco in the 1850s and 60s. Then the telephone came along. Alexander Grant Bell invented that in uh, the 1880s. And that has been a big part of uh, the 20th century up until the cell phone was invented. Now you had these big bricks and a uh, cell phone. You could take it anywhere you wanted to go. And that was in the mid to 70s to the 80s and 90s. But along came more of the portable cell phones in the 90s. And then right at about 2005, the smartphone, which revolutionized how we communicate and how we interact with the world came about. And about 2008, uh, you started seeing these things like Skype cropping up, which were these visual um, video communication capabilities where you got a, a TV screen, a monitor, and you could actually talk to people uh, over the internet and be able to communicate vi visually and, and with video. And that was a pretty popular thing when it came out. Not everybody had it, but a number of people had gotten exposed to it. And then over the course of the last, I'd say the last decade, we've been seeing more and more sort of video communication tools like Google Meet and um, not only Skype, but maybe GoToMeeting or uh, uh, WebEx and then Zoom had propped up. Then along came COVID. And that sort of changed the game for everybody. And what it did is it was an unexpected but a very strong acceleration to how we have to change our communication styles. We no longer are in a position where we can just meet with people and talk face to face and then maybe be able to have meetings in a conference room and then maybe do a little bit of video communication. It's now becoming the, the norm and the face to face is not, uh, especially under the current conditions, uh, something that we're seeing anymore. Uh, we're speculating that there will be a mix between the two, but time will tell. And so I want to be able to talk a little bit about how COVID has impacted our communication capabilities and then show you uh, what kind of communication tools are out there that can be very helpful for what you're trying to do. So what is virtual remote communication? Uh, there are probably a number of you on the call that are very familiar with this. You may actually be very proficient at using some of these tools. And some of you are sort of kind of getting into it or you haven't really quite got into it. But I want to try to give you a quick overview of what that is. 
Essentially, the most common form of communication using these video tools is through a tool like Zoom or Skype or go to meeting. And it's when you might go one on one conversation with somebody uh, at another part of the, uh, the city or another part of town or maybe across the country or across the world. And you can have small group meetings where you get a bunch of people together and you're able to communicate and talk live real time and be able to work through challenges or problems or work through some program schedules. These things can be pretty broad. They can increase in size. You can have larger meetings where you could have anywhere from several hundred people to believe it or not up to a thousand people. Webinars are very important. Uh, webinars have been around for a while but we're learning through uh, the advent of technology and the spread of it, and it's really increasing fast, that you get a lot of more, um, what I would call functionality in these webinars, such as polling and some Q&A and, and a few other things. And webinars seem to be a very powerful way, like what we're doing today, to be able to communicate ideas and concepts. So those are more of the common kinds of things that you might see and might be familiar with. But there's some additional things that sometimes we don't, we don't quite understand or maybe we're just not aware of, such as creative collaboration. There are a lot of tools that have come about here just within the last uh, five to 10 years that allow you to collaborate with teams in a way that allows you to be creative, such as using post-it notes virtually or being able to create wireframes for new communication apps or being able to do a whiteboard exercise on a computer screen. Those are becoming very popular for teams to actually problem solve remotely. So you don't have to meet in a big meeting group necessarily to do that. There are benefits though. I think there are benefits to being able to you know, meet people face to face to sort of kind of build, build that rapport. But these are some of the tools that allow you to be able to communicate remotely. There's team chats and discussions. You're starting to see a lot of those coming along. So those are very uh, powerful and a great way to be able to kind of communicate with your team uh, so you don't all have to be in the same building, as well as project management. Many of us are probably familiar with the project management tools that we've used in the past, like um, Project uh, Teams or MS Teams or MS Project or some of the other things. But now you're starting to see a whole slew of these uh, software programs coming out, allowing you to be able to communicate virtually real time with your team in a variety of different ways. So that kind of gives you a general overview of what virtual or remote communication is. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go into our first interactive poll and I'm gonna allow uh, Alyssa to take over and uh, turn that on and allow you to answer these questions. Steve. Okay, I am going to launch the poll. Uh, so in this poll, we will be asking you to please answer um, the following question. Please select the level of proficiency you have with virtual communication tools. And here we go. I see the results are starting to trickle in. Thank you. Again, just encourage you to use the tools. Give it another minute here. Thank you for those of you who uh, have, have already uh, utilized the poll. I can say that there is not one of you, according to this poll, who is not currently using uh, virtual remote communication or collaboration tools, which I suppose is to be expected given this uh, time in history. Give it a few more seconds. Thank you to those who have already voted. Okay. All right. So, um, actually, this is not surprising, um, and it's common. Uh, there are at least 50% that are just beginning on our call, just beginning to use these virtual remote communication collaboration tools. And that seems to be what we're hearing from other uh, sources uh, based on research. A lot of folks have been put into this position in March. I got to communicate with people. I can use the telephone. 
Uh, I can do that. I can do a video chat on my phone, but when Zoom came about and really kind of made themselves available for free, and they've offered uh, temporarily a free subscription to just get things going, that was really important. And people just started jumping in to be able to use it. And we all learn. Um, sometimes we've had a couple of goof ups setting up these Zoom calls. I'm, I'm one of them. But learning how you're trying to figure things out. And so that's not uncommon. Um, proficient, I see that we have about 40%. So a number of folks have been using this for a year and that's not also not uncommon. Um, that gives you a little bit more capability to maybe use some of the functionality on, uh, let's say, Zoom. So we're on a Zoom call. Some of the functionality for Zoom is being able to both talk over the uh, uh, video waves like this, as well as discuss things on a chat. They also have the polling function, which you're experiencing right now. So you can pull your audience and they also have a Q&A function, which is something else you can do um, as well as uh, they have the ability to share screen, which is what we're doing, as well as being able to uh, do uh, some whiteboarding exercises. Not too many people are familiar with that functionality on Zoom, but that's one of the things where you can actually start jotting down uh, a working live document on a whiteboard which is really kind of interesting. And the other really neat thing about Zoom is if you have a large group, you can break them up into smaller groups and do what are called breakout groups. And then they can work on a problem and come back and report out to the larger group. So that's some of the more, what I would call in-depth advanced functionality of Zoom. So these are great answers. So thank you very much for that. What I wanna do is I'm gonna move on. So let me close out of this. So what are the benefits? What are the benefits of virtual communication and collaboration? I think the most obvious one, as we're seeing today, it's very convenient. I don't have to go to the office and drive, you know, maybe 10 to 20 miles to go to work. And then I don't have to set up a meeting room. I mean, how many people, especially maybe in larger companies, have to reserve the room because somebody might reserve it on a spot or a day that you want to take it. That's always a frustration. This is convenient. You can set it up at any time according to people's schedule and then set up the call and set up the video uh, portions of it and have a meeting, which is great. Um, it's also very fast. It's something that from a time savings is great. You don't have to spend 30 to 45 or an hour if you commute that long to go into the building, go to work, and then go through the, the, the challenge of getting the meeting set up with the conference room. It happens very quickly, so it's very fast. You can do this for a fraction of the amount of time to be able to get that set up. It's, uh, it's great for talent. And what I mean by that is this is kind of advanced technology that a lot of uh, younger folks, um, especially ones coming out of college or ones in their uh, 20s or 30s are really used to. And it's very attractive. If you're using these kind of technologies, it allows them to uh, really embrace what it is you do as an organization goes a long way toward uh, what we will get to as work-life balance, which is important for them. But it also helps retain talent. There have been a number of articles that have said that advanced technologies and communication like this in companies have proven, proven to show that talent is, is usually retained and you don't you lose the talent uh, that you've been trying to get on board. So that's important. Um, and it's also great as a recruiting tool when you think of it that way. So that's a, that's a really nice um, a benefit uh, for this and higher retention rates. Uh, it's very good at cost. You don't necessarily have to uh, maintain a building per se or set up or reserve a conference room that maybe you have to rent out. It's something that you can purchase. Um, if you're just getting started, you can get a free version of this. If you're moving on to more functionality, you might have to pay for it, but it's still very affordable. So it does cut your costs. It cuts the cost on gasoline to drive your car, cuts the cost on the wear and tear of your car, cuts the cost on uh, maintaining a building, like I said, or maybe you can have the building uh, such that you could uh, lease half of it off to another organization and shrink uh, your rent. So those are some of the benefits associated with that. It really promotes flexibility and increases productivity. Uh, the nice thing about this is you could set it up at anywhere at any time for the most part, and you can bring in a bunch of different people from different parts of the world. So you could have a meeting and you could be talking about an incredible um, issue that you're struggling with from a productivity standpoint, but let's say your plant in Mexico is struggling with a machine that is 
you know, has gone down and you can have the experts know how to fix it, let's say in uh, Detroit, work on that with them while you're there managing the project. So you can bring all these people together. It's really powerful that way. And I think it, it allows organizations to be able to anticipate and solve problems quicker, which is another nice benefit. And one of the other benefits is it's a great way to keep a record. We are recording the session. So this session can be recorded to the cloud, cloud being uh, the place where you can keep a lot of your digital technologies and, and your recordings and your data. So this allows you to look at what you talked about maybe in a couple of weeks and say, hey, I forgot about what we had to do here. Let me go back to the recording. So those are some of the benefits. Some of the other ch uh, things that you have to look at are the challenges. <sighs> Bandwidth and access. Um, some of you may have experienced yesterday what happened with Zoom and they had sent out a letter of apology. They had a glitch that came up and that glitch really messed up people being able to set up their Zoom meetings. I couldn't get onto a Zoom meeting yesterday because they had this issue. But when you think about the bandwidth, you're talking about wireless bandwidth. Um, there can be time delays if you have a wireless system that is not the latest and greatest and has the highest speed. That will be an issue. The image can freeze. How many people have experienced me uh, being on a Zoom call all of a sudden your image freezes? I did that on purpose. I thought that was funny. You can get cutouts. People can get cut out and then they have to come back in. And as I mentioned before, slow internet connections. So those are some of the challenges there. Cybersecurity. Um, Zoom bombing is a real thing. A Zoom organization has had to put in, uh, let's say, um, uh, access codes as well as a waiting room because people would come in and just bomb your meeting. Uh, they think it's funny. Okay, well, it's not funny. So they had to put in the cybersecurity measures in that regard. But there's other measures that uh, you have to be careful about, such as sharing confidential information and everything. It's really predicated on the organization to be very careful on what they would share on a Zoom call what you might share on your screen, and uh, make sure that you're protecting your vital and very confidential information. Uh, building trust, I think that's a big one uh, that we struggle with. Um, values, trust, and, trust and, and just building an affinity of connecting is a little harder to do on a video call. One of the challenges that we have is you just don't necessarily have that, that connection that you can have physically. Human beings by nature are very social creatures. Uh, and it's one of these things that'll never go away. Uh, I'm very thankful we have uh, video communication and Zoom capability as well as some of these other tools. But I think if we try to do everything this way, um, you're gonna end up with some challenges in the area of trying to build that affinity. And so that's a, that's a problem. There's also a communication protocol. Um, and you wanna be able to not have an unstructured free for all. It's always good to have a plan and have some kind of basics, well, like what we introduced today at the beginning, like we'll be muted on this particular call, that'll allow us to go through this uh, kind of information. Your cultural barriers, especially communicating with other countries and cultures. You know, what is acceptable? What is to do or taboo, as I would say? It could be that uh, there are things that you don't want to necessarily um, kind of say to a particular culture or different kind of hand gestures. You have to be very careful with those. I think uh, it might be okay to say it's okay here in the United States, but what I just did doesn't work in other cultures. So you have to be careful with that. That's one of the things you have to be aware of. And so that's a challenge to fix. Software and hardware. One of the biggest challenges is, do I have the hardware? Is my computer powerful enough to handle these calls? You may have older computers, which make it very difficult. And then the software, well, that gets into all the different kinds of tools or video communication tools you can access. I'll be covering that here in a little bit. So those are some of the challenges. You can get overwhelmed with what's available there. There's the nonverbal cues. Uh, I'm relatively demonstrative in this call. You could see my hands. I mean, that's a verbal cue. But my face is sort of kind of small on the screen. So you don't know if I'm smiling or I'm frowning. Uh, you can't really tell. It's hard to tell if someone is not getting what you're saying, maybe. You've got a concept you're trying to share. Um, it's not always that easy. 
or uh, you may not be able to get an understanding of uh, your group and how you're presenting. So that's a challenge, how you go about uh, handling the verbal cues and gestures and body language. Uh, time zones, that's always a challenge. Uh, if you're a global company, it's very difficult. So you have to sort of kind of set up your meetings, whether it's first thing in the morning or late at night to accommodate some of these other countries. Um, that's uh, an issue that, that uh, has to be thought about when you're setting up uh, and utilizing these tools. Um, it's difficult to make decisions. Uh, it's not impossible. You can do this if you have a structure and it's always good to set up a structure, but making a decisions really, you have to be able to structure it in a way that everyone has a say and you can use some of the tools in Zoom which are more on the advanced uh, aspects of it. Um, and there's a level of reserve that happens on making a decision over a video call as opposed to being able to interact with somebody face to face. So those are some of the challenges. I think what it points out to is that uh, video communication is going to be a big part of our lives moving forward. But as soon as we can move forward and get a handle on uh, this pandemic, uh, a lot of face-to-face -face will be coming back. And I see us uh, having a hybrid approach to communicating as human beings. So with that, let's go to the second interactive poll and it consists of two questions. So I'll turn that over to Alyssa. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, so if you will be so kind as to answer the following two questions. Uh, the first one, what are the three primary benefits that you enjoy when using virtual or remote communication tools? And number two, what are the three primary challenges that you are dealing with when it comes to virtual or remote communication tools? So with that, we will launch the first, first of the two questions of the poll. as well as the second. And at this time, I would also uh, remind you that um, you can at any time utilize the chat box if you have any questions or um, are looking for more information. I see those. Poll answers are starting to roll in. Thank you very much. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't uh, already seen, you probably have, but um, you will have to scroll to the very bottom uh, to um, have access to the second poll question. Go ahead and maybe give it another 30 seconds. Thank you if you've already answered. A few more seconds and we'll end the poll. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for everyone who participated in that. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much, Alyssa, and everyone for participating. So I'll go to the first question. What are the three primary benefits you enjoy when using these tools? So the one that came out on top is convenience. Um, I couldn't say it any better. It is so easy to connect with people and it can happen anywhere. It can be business. I use this to communicate with my family and it's been great. It's helped us stay connected during the pandemic. There's a lot of fear and concern out there, but being able to communicate with people, this has been a blessing in that regard. So that's wonderful. Or you can hang out with friends. Um, you know, there's folks that uh, instead of meeting and socializing at a, a brew pub or something like that, you can have what is called virtual happy hours among other things, which is always kind of fun. But from a business standpoint, it's really convenient. Some of the others, uh, we have uh, time savings. That seemed to be uh, voted pretty high. That's at about 53%. Uh, 
along with um, productivity and flexibility. Obviously, uh, that's that's very good for that. I can get more done in some respects by just doing Zoom calls or these uh, video calls, as you would call it. And then we have uh, cost savings and uh, a little bit on uh, record keeping. Um, let's see, and uh, talent development. Um, thought that might be a little bit higher, but that's okay. I'm, I don't think uh, you will realize just how important having some of the latest technologies will be in, in attracting and retaining talent. Um, some of the younger folks uh, these days are just so savvy with digital technologies, it's incredible. Now, what are the three primary challenges you're dealing with? And I'm not surprised, Wi-Fi, broadband limitations, that's a big one. Um, we've all faced it. Uh, some of the other ones that are up there is uh, cybersecurity, um, hacking or Zoom bombing challenges. I'm sure some of us have experienced that. And the nonverbal cues. And I feel for that. I, I really, I have an affinity toward understanding a human being, not by what they say, but just how they bodily and hand-wise function or how they, how they look or their facial features. That's very important. That's a big part of what we do. And decision-making, that's, that's a challenge. I think that's a, a considerable challenge uh, when you're trying to help organizations um, make these big decisions and the affinity and trust is definitely a part of that. So that's great. These are great answers. Thank you very much. So let's move on. I wanna get into a little bit more about the details associated with uh, these remote communication tools. So I've been talking about remote communication and collaboration tools. There are actually, if you were to break it into groups, there's, there's essentially four groups. Some may say there's five different kinds of tools out there, but I've, I've sort of picked four. Communications really talks about what we're all mostly familiar with, and that is the Zoom or uh, WebEx or Google Meet or uh, Skype or in some cases other tools. And I think uh, those are the ones that most people are familiar with. But some of these tools have collaboration capability, not all of them. Some of them have the ability to chat. So you can have a chat function, which can allow you to present something while other people are, are, are responding to that through chat function. So that's a little bit of a communication and collaboration effect. But there are specific collaboration tools that are set up to allow teams to work together, not in a what I would call a video way. You may not be able to see them talking like you're seeing me talk, but you can be working real time and you could be working and collaborating on something such as, um, you know, how do we uh, manage uh, through chat or through other kind of functions, uh, particular problems of the day. Then there's project management. There's a number of project management tools that have uh, the ability to work through how you're going to assign tasks, who's responsible, what are the milestones, and that all can be done real time. An example might be MS Teams. They have a relatively good project management tool function. Microsoft has a suite of tools and they still have the ability to provide Microsoft Project, which is that Gantt chart from a project management standpoint, is very powerful. So those functions can be very useful. And there's some new ones that are coming out that are pretty powerful as well, like monday.com. And I'll share a few of these um, uh, leads here in a, in a little bit. And the last one a lot of folks are not necessarily entirely familiar with, except for maybe more the product development oriented folks that are doing a lot of new product development are these creativity and innovation communication tools, if you will. And that allows you to do real time uh, with a group of people, live mind maps. A mind map is basically connecting uh, bits of information or thoughts in your head and how they relate to each other, almost like a flowchart as well as you can do uh, a whiteboarding exercise. You can do things such as doing virtual post-it notes. So you can fill out a post-it note for brainstorming. You can actually do a number of different things in the user experience realm or the user, inter user interface realm. You could have teams working at various remote locations all on one model for uh, wireframing to build an application, uh, which when you think about for manufacturing, you may have tablets that you're trying to create an application for manufacturing in a sense of, all right, how can I have my manufacturing team on the floor uh, be able to monitor the equipment and how they're performing? 
So those are the four virtual remote tool categories uh, that you can look at. I want to give you an example of uh, how you can apply these tools based on the first poll that we took. I know that some of you um, may be just beginning to use these tools. Some of you may be uh, somewhat proficient, like you've been using them for about up to a year, and some of you may have been using these for many years. Uh, there are different tools that can meet each one of those levels. Uh, Facebook groups is a powerful one for some of that's just trying to get started, and it's free. It's one of those things where you don't have to pay any money. Organizations today are, are really trying to keep track of uh, their, their, their funding and their resources. Uh, we're in a bit of an economic uh, issue here as a, as a country. Uh, uh, we can you know, use these kind of tools if, if we're tight on the cash to be able to communicate with our teams. Google Meet is also another free tool that can do that. And Zoom has a tier, as they call it, that is free as well. And Microsoft Teams, you'd have to get the Microsoft suite to do that, but that's, that's another tool that can be useful. Believe it or not, Microsoft Teams, you can actually have a video call with a group of people or a regular telephone call using their, their, their uh, uh, programming. And as you work your way up, you can use tools that have more expanded functionality. Zoom has some basic functionality, but uh, depending on the tier you purchase in a communications, you can get a pretty complex level of functionality that gives you the polling, that gives you the Q&A, that gives you the ability to do breakout groups, that gives you the ability to you know, do things uh, uh, in the area of chats and, and, and some other functionality. So that sort of kind of shows you that you don't have to pick the big tool in the box. Sometimes if you can use a simpler thing that you're, is so ubiquitous out there, such as face, Facebook or Google, those two tools can be very helpful for what you're striving to do to communicate. So that kind of gives you an example of what you might be able to use if you're beginning. And we all can communicate in a variety of different ways, but they're all very helpful. Let me walk through a simple example of what I was talking about relative to various levels of tiers or what we might call pricing. I'm gonna use uh, two examples. The first one will be virtual communication example using Zoom. One of the things that you can do uh, as an organization is take a, a very thoughtful approach in how you might evaluate the different tools out there and to do so in a very, uh, what I would call uh, planned and structured way. All right, figure out what are the tools out there, try to define what the pros are, what the cons are, okay? Determine what the costing and the pricing might be and what the various levels are and see if there's any uh, testimonials that can say this has been a great tool. Uh, one of the things I like to look at is some of these tools have uh, ratings uh, given by users. It's you know, five stars or four stars being the highest all the way down to one star. And you can get a feel for how these tools are being manipulated uh, for the benefits of those users and what are working, what aren't. Zoom has got competitive pricing. It's got really excellent performance and features, easy to uh, have the user interface with it. So the learning curve is very, very short and uh, issues are addressed quickly. Yesterday, um, they had a funky glitch in their programming, but they were able to address it in a matter of hours, which today, um, when you're looking at a complex global system like that is, is pretty powerful. Now, they don't have a toll-free number, at least in the United States and the UK, and there are some security flaws that they're working on, and there might be some other cons associated with it. But you can see you can get different levels. The basic, which uh, might be able to handle less than 100 folks uh, with some just basic utilization is free. But then when you go to the pro version, that's $14.95 a month, and that gives you a little bit more functionality. The business version goes up to $20 a month, and that allows you to have up to 300 users maximum at that monthly rate. So it's $19.99 a month per user. So keep that in mind on these prices. Enterprise model goes up to a much bigger size. So it's $19.99 per user, but you can go up to 500 users in that example. So uh, Zoom is a good one to look at. Uh, I'm not endorsing it, saying that's the only one you can look up, but it's an example that's uh, good to share and we're using Zoom right now. The other tool is Slack. Slack is a new tool that came out here in the last year or so. And that's a very good, both communication but collaboration tool. It's got lots of options 
and lots of tools that you can use when you're trying to collaborate uh, on a project or you're trying to collaborate on a problem to solve. It allows you to customize it uh, and it integrates very well with productivity tools. It can be a bit pricey uh, and it somehow, it somehow struggles with audio and video call quality. Uh, it's not quite as good as Zoom yet. I'm sure they're working on it. But it too also has multiple levels of pricing. So you can get the standard uh, pricing at $6.67 a month, uh, or you can get a plus, which is $12.50. Uh, but then when you get to the enterprise level, that's when you have to call them up and they have custom pricing for that. It's not as maybe as transparent as Zoom is, but it gives a little bit of different functionality beyond just the communication into the collaboration role that maybe Zoom doesn't have. So that's an example of a collaboration tool in this regard. One of the things you got to think about is where am I going to start? So some of you are defaulting to the simplest thing that you have. You've all, based on the poll, are just getting into this, just beginning, and some of them you have some proficiency. But what you can do is you can look at how you might want to consider these tools in a way and how you might want to expand based on these four categories. You can say, I just need communication. That's all I need. That's great. But if you want to expand into communication and collaboration, you might see if there's a tool that can do both. Zoom can do a little bit of that, but there's other tools that can do that as well. You'll have to go through and do some research. MS Teams has both, which is really nice. And it works out very well. Zoom does have benefits of having better video quality and allowing to do some things that you cannot do on MS Teams. You might have a need for project management, and there's some tools there that do very well. You'll notice that MS Teams or MS Project kind of goes through these first three, maybe not into the last one. But each one of these uh, offerings, whether it's Zoom or Facebook, Skype, uh, Click Meeting, or Team Viewer, all have different levels and all different kind of unique capabilities that the others may not have. Some are better than others and some are not. Same thing with collaboration. And with project management, there's some interesting things there too. I mean, as you're starting to do a lot of what I would call remote management of your teams, remote management maybe of your plants or some of your business units, these virtual project management tools may become more important to you. And they allow you to work in remote situations at real time. And last but not least is the creativity and innovation tools. I've used a number of these in here, Miro, Mind Manager. Um, I'm familiar with Miro. Obviously, Zoom uh, has some uh, benefits there, uh, as well as some of these other teams and project management. So look to Nextivation maybe being an element of a resource. You can uh, engage with us, and we can try to give you some guidance and advice. But think about things in the concept of communication, collaboration, project management, creativity, innovation. There might be a fifth category. I'm not sure what that might be just yet, but you can see there's different tools that work out for each. So I want to talk a little bit, excuse me, went too fast. I want to talk a little bit about uh, how to get started. Uh, this is not unlike uh, some of the previous uh, future ready uh, awareness sessions that we've given in session two. I used a similar process on how to get started. Do an assessment. You might be using a tool right now because you had to and you had to jump right into it. Don't feel like I'm locked into that tool. Take some time to do an assessment, all the different tools out there, and think about what is it that I need? What are the things that I absolutely need to have? Think of it in the context of those four categories, communication, collaboration, project management, and creativity and innovation. Maybe there is a tool that can cover two to three of those, or maybe there's a tool that uh, would be really great in one, but you have a secondary tool that does the other. So think about it that way. And maybe you need just a basic tool just to kind of get your feet solidified on the ground in this new COVID reality. And you might want to be able to look at, okay, what other things are out there that I don't have to pay hardly anything for, but can give me a little bit more functionality. Likewise, think about your customers. What do they need? It may be that your customers really want to interact with you more on a regular basis. So you, you might have to have a more powerful tool or it might have to be a specific tool like a collaboration tool or project management tool. That's really something that you need to kind of talk to your customers about and understand what they need. 
if you bring them into this discussion, I think it'll make your decision so much easier. And I'm sure they're going to want to maintain and not have to pay uh, for a tool on their end that's going to cost too much. And that leads to the third one. What can you afford? What can your customers afford? A lot of these tools, their websites spell out exactly what they offer at those various tiers. Some of them don't have tiers. It's just one size fits all, but others have many tiers. And you can figure out what might work best for you and your customer. Always start at the basic. Many of you have done that. I can tell by the polls. Communicate first. Always communicate first. Then think about, okay, then how can I add functionality to it? And that gets to expanding the functionality. And you want to do that step by step. Try not to get enamored with the latest and greatest tool that has all these functions and is really powerful and I can do things that I didn't think I could do before, but it might cost you, and I'm just making this up, 60 bucks a month. Maybe that's too much. Don't know. Um, think about what it is you can get away with to start in the basic and how you might to expand functionality and then see how you can integrate some of these offerings. And what I mean by that is think about a tool that can do multiple things for you and see how well it works for you. Or how does that tool integrate with maybe another tool? Think about how you can use Zoom in context with MS Teams for project or how you might use um, Skype for how to communicate um, project management tools and things of that nature. So that's really a nice, simple way of doing a step-by-step -step approach to get started and really finding out the best tool for you. As Tony Robbins said, to effectively communicate, I think we have to realize that we're all different in the way that we perceive the world and how we communicate. So we can use this understanding as a way to kind of guide our communication with others. So that leads us to our last interactive poll. So I'm gonna turn it over to Alyssa. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, Steve mentioned this is our last poll, and here it is. Uh, please answer this question. Based on the presentation today, what types of virtual or remote tools will you consider using? Please select all that apply. And we are officially launching the third poll. Thank you for taking the time to answer the question. Give it a few more seconds here. I see almost everybody's answered, so thank you very much. All right, a few more seconds. All right, thank you everyone for taking the time to answer. And here are the results, Steve. Well, this is great. And this actually can open us up to some Q&A here before I get to it, but communication and collaboration um, a lot, not surprised, but it's really heartening to see that at least greater than half of you see, yeah, project management, creativity, innovation. I think that one tool can't do it all. Um, I think that would be uh, not a wise thing to think that way. There are many tools out there. Maybe some tools can do many things, but you have to have a, what I would call a toolbox of different tools for different purposes. So the fact that you're all looking at this as like, I might consider this and I might consider that, that's, that's really encouraging. Just remember to try to follow a process that, you know, is very, very deliberate and kind of thinks through all the aspects of it. I'd like to open it up. Um, a couple of you, two of you said other, and I'd really be curious to know what other is. So if, if you can, um, if you could answer the question for those that said other, uh, what were you thinking in other? So maybe we could use the Q&A function or we could use the chat function if that's helpful. Steve said, please utilize the question and answer box um, to chat. ask questions or chat. Okay. 
Don't be bashful. Client customer portals for communication. Thanks, Bob. That's good. Customer CRM systems, customer relationship management. That'd be a good one. I didn't think of that. So you could have maybe a customer bucket alongside the other four. That's good. Anybody else? Well, we do have another one, Steve. All right. The other one was forms of communication, I guess, networking, outreach, training, and demos. Actually, Colleen, that's a good one. Um, you might be able to use some of the four existing ones, but there could be another category for that too. Um, being an open mind, I think that could be powerful. How can you create, and maybe that's a new business model for some of these tools. Don't be surprised that you could look at all these tools and you could creatively come up with a whole new mechanism to communicate that no one's ever thought of before. I'm usually a positive minded guy in that regard. So that's a, that's a good answer. Okay, excellent. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I did want to answer uh, just sort of kind of put out there that um, one of the uh, attendees, Rhonda Schultz said that she puts her slides into Google Slides for online presentations, and it causes less drain on the computer system. However, she did say, Switching can cause some slight formatting changes. I know that when I go from a Google Forms to something else, uh, there's always a formatting issue and that has to be corrected. It's not hard to do, just needs some time to do it. So translation, I think this is a great thing on translation. When you're translating from one program to another, you got to kind of be aware of that. And uh, it may cause gnashing of teeth, uh, but you know, sometimes you have to think about that. So thanks Rhonda, I appreciate that. All right, let's move on. We're just about ready to wrap up here. Final thoughts. Uh, I just like to say that it's essential for communication and collaboration, these tools for COVID-19 and beyond. I think you have to look at it from the concept of the four, actually it could be five and six categories of communication, virtual communication tools, where, you know, adding that customer relationship bid or thinking about maybe a whole new tool system. I can do some interesting things. COVID-19 is here. Um, we're all hopeful that we'll get a vaccine, but I think there will be other pandemics that are gonna come along every once in a while, hopefully less than more. But I firmly believe that a hybrid approach to how you communicate is really going to make you very successful as a business. Uh, I do not believe we can go back to the old way of doing it solely, but we still need to have a lot of face-to-face. -face. There's nothing like being able to talk to people in person and be able to build that rapport. Different tools for different purposes. What do you need and why? I think uh, looking at things and just breaking them up into those what I call categories can be helpful because it can allow you to look at the kind of tool for certain kind of needs and then see if that translates to those other categories or not and be able to make smart decisions on how maybe I need a tool here for communication and one here for project management. Find out what your customers are using. What's best for you? It may be that some of your customers are utilizing a tool you're not aware of. I'm not even that list that I created. And by the way, that list of tools under those four categories is not exhaustive. There are hundreds of tools out there and they're growing by the day. They are, a lot of these started businesses are creating a lot of these kind of tools. So keep that in mind. Ask for help. There are so many kinds of tools. Where do I start? So that kind of leads us to how can we help you? We can help you maybe do some assessment and some research in some of these tools. We've already started that and done a little bit ourselves and give you some guidance. Uh, we may be able to provide you some training in the area of Zoom. Uh, our IT group, our IST group has done that internally. Maybe there's things that we can do for you there. In fact, I think we can do that as well as training in some of these other tools, specifically the collaboration tools is something that uh, I have experience in as well as others. So those are some of the final thoughts to think about as uh, you're looking at some of these tools. So think about those things relative to uh, what your needs are and how you might be able to move forward. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Alyssa.
All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, at this time, I would like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. So again, if you do have questions, please type them into the chat box. Uh, if there's anything that you would like a little bit more information on or anything that you'd like answered. I do see, Steve, that we currently have one question in the chat box uh, that sort of relates to what you actually just said. Uh, does Penn State offer an evaluation of company needs or help select the best combination of applications? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Um, what we'd like to do is maybe engage with you, talk with you a little bit about that, and see what we can do, um, and try to see what we can do together to help you meet your needs. Um, I'd be more than happy, uh, uh, Bud, if you want to talk with me. Um, our new uh, director, Sherry McClary, would be more than happy to also talk to you about some of the things that we're offering, not only for next innovation, but we can also bring in our communications, excuse me, our continuing education uh, director, Pat uh, Hollinger, to be able to see what we can do for you as well. Thanks, Steve. I uh, want to be mindful of time, but uh, also remind you that, uh, you know, we, we do have time available for questions and answers. So if you do have anything, uh, please put it in the chat box and we will do our best to answer it. Thank you. Get a few more minutes for any incoming questions. We have another question, Steve. Oh, it's actually not a question. It is a, a couple of comments. Thank you for the great information. Thank you very much, Margaret, for your comment. And uh, from Ron, great presentation, Steve, thanks. Thank you, everybody. It's been a real pleasure talking with you today. And hopefully uh, this has been helpful for you and uh, we're here to help you out. So if you have questions, don't be bashful. Reach out to us at Next Ovation and uh, and we'll do what we can to try to help each other, uh, help you kind of meet your needs. Well, with that, I do not see any further questions. Um, so I uh, want to thank you, Steve. And I also want to remind everyone that we do have several more sessions in our Setting a Future Ready uh, Foundation series, um, including our next one, From Information to Insight, Data Visualization, which will take place on September 10th at 1130 in the morning. Um, now, we, I'm actually going to throw you a curveball for that one uh, because that session will be held on a Thursday instead of our usual Tuesday mornings. Um, so we're getting a little crazy there. Uh, but uh, with that, if there are no further questions, and oh, we actually do have uh, from Kim. Thank you very much for the information. Thanks, Kim. Thank you for joining us. Well, with that, uh, I would like to thank Steve for this very insightful discussion. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. And I would also like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we hope to see you next time on September 10th and have a great rest of your week, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.